just felt like sharing that with you. So, finally getting down to this. It's been months since I've said I was going to do this tutorial and now I'm finally going to do it. So, welcome to the life bar tutorial for Mugen. First step would be deciding which life bars to make. I've made several rough drafts throughout the years and uh, I've never made them. Uh, some I've started, um, some I've lost, and I don't know what the hell happened. Anyways, this is the first draft. Uh, it looks okay. Uh, as you can see, the life bar will uh, flash uh, from red to yellow. It'll go back and forth, and a white one will be when the player is hurt. And then you have the green to the blue. Okay. Now, uh, the way life bars work is you can either have a still image like this, for instance, and have animated things like this, or you can use one frame alone for you know anything. I, I like to use animations and colors like this because it looks really fancy and it, you know it stands out. Also the style. You see how I have this little shadow here which I kept here as well and here and here. Uh, keep it uh, consistent so it looks nice. Alright so this is the first life bars I'm showing you. Some of you may remember these uh, maybe maybe not. And these are the uh, win icons. No these are actually teammate icons. Um, yeah teammate icons. So this is the first one. I'm kind of iffy about it. Uh, this is stage. This is the second one, which is based off of Persona Three. Um, I did these originally for a friend, and they just been sitting there rotting since I guess 2009 or something. I, I edited, edited these not too long ago, probably a couple months ago, to fit normal Mugen standards of a 25 by 25 picture portrait. That's that. Next one is uh, King of Fires inspired life bars. Uh, more or less, portraits are going in this big space here. Uh, custom portraits at that. Power bars going down here. Uh, life bars going here. Uh, these are wind icons. Each color is a different meaning. They're going to go right here. Um, these are timer fonts, uh, power bar fonts, letters for the name, uh, and you see what that is. That doesn't look good. These are Godzilla life bars, which I made from a Godzilla. Uh, game I recreated them basically it has a nice little style to them you know it's all angled so it's not like a standard generic square even these look really nice they came out pretty good I think uh, this is the one icon it's a Godzilla foot I think I didn't realize but Godzilla has three toes not four and these are um, these are fonts from what game is it uh, Shining Force for the uh, Sega Genesis uh, Mega Drive Next is, these are custom life bars I've never used. In fact, I made these so long ago, uh, I tried to base them off of Capcom style and all that. And they look, it came out nice. Uh, a friend of mine, Tolga, he's using them for a uh, fighter, a uh, 2D fighter maker. And uh, they look really good in his game, but for Mugen, they've never been coded. Uh, if someone wants to make these, just contact me. I will gladly send them to you and hope you make them. Uh, preferably someone from Mugen Guild or Mugen Free For All, but that point aside. Uh, so this is single player blank bar, this is single player full bar, single player hurt bar. I'm just doing it like this so you get the idea of what they look like. This is teammates blank, teammates full, teammates hurt. This is power bar empty and power bar full. There is no power bar uh, in between. It's coded there, but it's really it does nothing. Uh, the numbers and the letter for names. See this real conception by me because I don't know I just came up with the idea. Next image. Ah, these are my uh, joy and glory. These are original Mugen HD life bars that I redrew from scratch to look like the official uh, Mugen HD life bars. Um, I had I originally I had this coded, but thanks to Endog and his shenanigans, I I lost it. And I was replaced by hearing him saying, oh yeah, and it's in my Mugen, it really pissed the hell out of me. Um, power bars, life bars, teammate bars, hurt bars. I had this all coded at one point. I was even down to the fight animation, KO animation. Man, uh, I was pissed. Next, ah, I can't make these. These are my Street Fighter Alpha 4 life bars for uh, BC and his game. Look at that globe, I recolored this. It looks nice, I think. Okay, uh, see, this is made for a full game, so I can't make these at all. Uh, pencil and paint brush life bars. I drew this from scratch, just out of boredom. I think the pencil came out really nice. I used the old Genesis style of uh, a crosshatch for shading. It looks really nice from far away. 
Next is my Dragon Ball Z Life Force. These are already made, and I can't remake them because I'm lazy. Uh, these are Dive Kick Life Bars, made from uh, Dive Kick the game. If you don't know what that is, I'll just show you here quickly. It is ridiculous. Dive Kick. I think this is it. I don't trust GameStop too much. But the two main characters is Dive and Kick. And it's really funny. See the life bars? See, it's ridiculous. But that's what these life bars are based off, and I actually redrew them from a, a, a high HD um, screenshot of a video. So they came out pretty well, I think. Next is something that's not really meant for anything. Um, Guardian Force... No, wait, no, no, no. Guardian Heroes life bars. Um, I used a nice little gradient. I tried to copy the same like green and blue. I added some cross-hatching to make it um, stand out a little bit, you know, because a solid color doesn't really show too well. Then I have these Kingdom Hearts HD life bars. Didn't code them. Nothing. These, I don't know what these are, but these are also original life bars that I drew up that I just never coded. Pokemon life bars, uh, Power Quest life bars, these are, um, I, I fixed them to work on a 320 by 240 uh, screen ratio, so they're considered low res. And these are an, actually an old life bar set that I saw on the screenshot that I, I felt like I had to remake it in, a, in a high res, so it came out pretty nice looking. I didn't code these either. And this is what I was originally going to use for this, but I've decided not to. Because, um, I don't know, I, I the design came out good, but I just don't like the way it looks, I guess you can say. These are uh, uh, life tabs, as you can see here, it goes down like that. This is not possible in Mugen, not this slantedness like that, you can't get that, it's impossible. And these are bullets, just bullets. And that's it, so let's see, which one am I going to do? Which one am I going to do? And stop. Okay, that's not one. Let's try it again. Which one am I gonna do? No, that's not one either. And no, no, I don't like this. So, anyways, it looks like I'm gonna go with these. All right, sweet. Um. Okay, at the end of this, I will not release these life bars until I finish the tutorial. So here's the image. So first, we need to separate our images and get them um, properly situated. Now, remember, Mugen only supports 256 color sprites or um, images. Okay, at the moment, um, you can use higher uh, color uh, or you know whatever. Um, but Mugen 1.0 does not support that yet. Mugen 1.1 does. We're not going to worry about that. We're strictly sticking to our 256 palette um, images. Now. Since I redrew these, uh, which I'm very proud of by the way, they came out really awesome. They came out just the way the original ones looked. Uh, these are for a HD screen. By the way, if you want to know how to get a nice palette and all that, you can check out my uh, video right here for uh, my Mugen character creation, which explains um, finding sprites and uh, more or less how to make a character. But it also explains how to get the sprites, the palettes, and all that stuff done. And it has links to iDraw, which is a program I'm using right here. So I'm just going to go there. Um, I need a new Mugen. So I'm going to go to Mugen Free For All and click on the link to Elect Bike because I'm too lazy to type in Elect Bike. And I'm going to get my Mugen 1.0 now, get it, save it, and close this and wait. All right, so let's start this off. Okay, let's start this off here. I think I should probably rename this just to be safe because Mugen 100, yeah, that sounds good. Okay, these are all work files for Kung Fu Man and all that. Let's try blah 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 blah. Let's see, close Firefox. Take all these. You don't have to do this. I'm just doing this for the sake of my convenience. Okay, so we don't need the work files. We don't need these three programs. 
we don't need the old tools because they don't work. Docs I will leave. Now, um, currently this is a default fresh Mugen. It runs on 1280 by 720 resolution. Let me set my controls. Yeah, the hell. Okay, see? Everything is all HD, fancy, blah, 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 blah. Good. Now we have the Mugen that I'm going to use. So we'll get Fighter Factory. I prefer to use Fighter Factory 3. I recommend everyone use Fighter Factory 3 for anything Mugen related, strictly because it just works perfectly. Now, um, by default, from a fresh Mugen, you have to go into your data folder, then your Mugen 1 folder to enter to edit your screen pack. Uh, these things here, these fight, fight effects and system, these are for um, old Win Mugen stuff. So Mugen 1.0 stuff is located right here in Mugen 1. Then we're going to open the fight.sff. And this will load up all the fight stuff. See, so these are, um, looks like a shadowy thing for the life bars. Uh, the actual, zoom out, the actual on bar itself, red, change the colors, power bar, fight, okay, all that stuff, right? Groovy. Now, let's see. So, th they automatically use group 10, so I'm going to use group 0, just because I like 0. So, we got our image, right? I like to set everything up in a image already. This way, I have everything perfectly measured. For instance, here on the left side is seven pixels from the end to this uh, beginning of this image. And on this side, it is also seven. See, seven from the image to the end of the screen. And likewise, from the top to the bottom. So, also, I learned this from uh, Lax32, or 23. I forget your number, dude, but... Lax, bro, awesome idea that you gave to me years ago. If you plan it out in an image, and when you align it into Mugen, you're actually giving, making yourself, um, it saves time for yourself, and it actually makes it easier, and gives you more of opportunity to do whatever you want to do. You can add more layers of stuff, and have less work to do with alignment. So we're going to call this uh, uh, bars itself, because it's the bars itself. Right now, we're gonna erase that and put these, and this one's gonna be um, team bars itself. Okay, now we have okay, this okay for this. I have to use one, not both. So, this is gonna be player one, player one health. Okay, I could technically mirror this in Mugen. I can, I'll actually show it, but I'll, I'll have an extra just in case. And this will be player 2 health. Mugen has the ability to mirror uh, images like that, so I could use that. And this is going to be player three, uh, 3 health. This is going to be player 4 health. Now, when I add them to Mugen, to Fighter Factory, I'm going to crop them. Use Fire factory to crop them. So this will save me time and effort in cropping them myself. Good. So now let's do the reds. Luckily, the red is actually the same for both, so I could I just need one. Uh, team one red. Okay. Now team two red. Okay. Now last thing is power bars. So, oh, I didn't, I wonder if I can leave them like this. You know, I think I can really leave them like this. I'm going to, I'm going to try it. Power bar. I've never tried this before, but I'm going to try and leaving it like that. See what happens. Now let's go into Fire Factory. <clears throat> We're going to add them as group zero. Uh, do, 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 do. Bars itself. Group zero aligned to the center. What's this? Okay. Uh, it looks like bottom sensor. So I'm going to go with that. Bottom sensor, crop before access. Important. Now see, I cropped it before access, but I still have the, you know, whatever's left of the alpha color. So this is going to be good for alignment. So this is centered right here. Okay, Fire Factory centered it for me. So that's, that is um, group zero, image zero. Let me uh, align those with the auto organizer. Good, now let's see. Let's add uh, player 
one's life bar. If this works for the power bar, what I mentioned before by you having both like that, then it'll work for player um, get life bars as well, which would be pretty awesome. Cool. Um, let's see. So player one health. Player one's gonna be group one. Uh, crop it and onion skin. Go back to the first. So this way the the bars itself are like that. If you align the life bars within the SFF, you will not have any difficulty um, doing it in game. It'll be much easier and you'll you'll get to the end of it much quicker than you would normally. And you see you could just check to see make sure everything fits up well. Sometimes you miss cut and you may be missing a pixel or so. Oh no the phone. So that's player one. He's all happy there. And let's add player one's red. Uh, team one red uh Okay, team one red, so one, one. Align the same way, crop before, fill in the space. Good, see? Okay, so now we need player two's life bar. Player two will be two. You know, this way you ha kind of have a sense of what your numbers mean and you don't have to go back for reference constantly you just know group one is player one group two is player two group zero is uh, like system stuff and this one matches up perfectly as well let's see I'm gonna mirror the red mainly because it's the same thing now we'll go to player three group three for player three and you don't have to do it like this I chose to do this like this strictly because I feel that it's a lot easier um, I forgot to add uh, team life bars itself. So that's group zero, one. Same thing. Is this higher? Oh, it actually is a hot pixel higher. I never realized that. Oh well, it's not even an issue. So that's that. And hold on. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Uh, I just paused for a second and then came back. Okay, so that's aligned. What am I aligning now? Oh crap, I moved it. Oh no, I keep moving it. Stop moving. Okay. No, that's good. I moved this. Okay, by keeping this aligned, it also makes it easier for the alignment of power bar. Because uh, the power bar cannot shift when you are. Um, between single and simultaneous so the power bar stays the same because of that I have to keep these aligned the same way it's not really an issue anyways oh I'm not censored anymore that's undo 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 come on undo it for me ah okay good 634 634 See, this is also another reason why it's good to align these together. This way, if one thing moves, you know. Okay, good. All right, so I had oh, I didn't check the other side. Oh, wait, this is becoming troublesome. Okay, power bars are locked in place. They're not locked in place here, though. Okay, so the power bars simultaneously will be a bit different, and I'll have to do it later on, so forget that for now. So we have the life bars itself. Then we have player one full gauge. Player one, her, what the hell is that? Okay, it just looks misaligned. Then I have player two full gauge. Pl mm. Oh, yeah, player two hertz is going to be the same thing. Uh, player three, uh, leave you alone. Then I have the power gauge, which I'll make uh, image five. So power bar is five. Center, blah, blah 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 blah. Okay. Now I need to align the power bars. Then we can begin the actual coding. And there. Okay. So player one is lined up from beginning to end. Player two is the hell is that what's this why does this look scary and wrong why is player two off to the side like that's craziness hey, hey, hey you know what the helps this copy paste mirror basta good so save that now I'll, I'll re-add this 
uh, group five. Now, see, I'm using very common numbers here, so everything works into comes into place really well, and I don't have to worry about things being too miss. Uh, what is this? Okay, player two bars are like really out there. I gotta figure out why that is. So, um, okay, I'll I'll use this, I guess. This, and I will paste it in the power bar. Cannot paste from eyedraw to eyedraw, just remember that. There, okay. Paste it. Good. Now I take the power bars and I move them up piece by piece. Or not. Okay, that didn't work. So let's see, how do I do this? Um, okay. I will. Hmm. I'm not sure why this is. It's so simple to do this, but it's really stumping the hell out of me now. Okay, I'll just take this end, like this, drag it up here, pop this in place here. Good, that's that. Then I'll take this one, which is more or less the same image, just mirrored, drag it up here, pop this in place here. Boom. Good, now I'll erase everything else around it, so I just have the power bars left. There's the bottom ones because those are misaligned, obviously. Good. Okay, so now I'll re-add them again. And now they will be aligned properly. So change. The power bar. Crop, yes. Blah, 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 blah. And as you see, they are aligned properly and filled correctly. So let's save this. And now, so as I said before, keep it organized. Zero. Uh, completely, this is all um, like user interface, you know? This is what the player is going to see as the the bars. Uh, then you have player one life for group one, player two life for group two, three and four for three and four, and five for power bars. That's how I like to keep it. You can use whatever numbers you want to use. Don't use something ridiculous and over the top. Now let's go into coding. Here is the probably intimidating fight definition file. Now let's see. I'll erase the top part. It doesn't matter. Let's start with files. Files are more or less redirections of what it has. Now, by default, this full, since this is in the Mugen 1 folder, uh, the SFF, fight the SFF, is being read from here because it's in the same folder. Sound is going to be read from data folder since it's not in that folder. So Mugen has a safeguard where if it's not in the current folder, check Mugen folder. Font will be 1, 2, 3, 4. Enter 48, number 48, um, name 14, and num1. These are all default located in the font folders. Uh, fight effects. These are not in the Mugen 1 folder, so Mugen will automatically check the data folder, which they are right here. So that's that. Uh, fight effects scale. If you're doing high res um, 640 by 480 resolution, use 2. Is 1280 by 720 use 4 and uh, 320 by 240 use 1 and that's purely because uh, no one's really using 320 by 240 anymore now this is the life bar coding this is kind of intimidating to look at right now because it's really bizarre stuff but everything is labeled neatly I mean let's see this says life bar so this controls player one's life bar all these codes to say P1 and player two, all these codes say P2. Uh, these are animations which you can read in my uh, character creation uh, tutorial. Uh, simultaneous life bars, player one's life bars, player two's life bars, threes and fours. And another animation which is darkened life bar background. Don't need this because we don't have any dark parts yet. Why well, don't I have dark parts? That's strange. I gotta put those in somehow. Okay, um, turns life bars. Um, when you're playing turns, which is like say one person versus uh, four or team battle that's what turns life bars is it's like a team battle so what happens is it uses uh, the life bars you have here so what I recommend for everybody is once you've code regular one-on-one -on -one life bars copy this and paste this here because that's more or less gonna be the exact same thing and it's gonna look awesome now we have the power bars uh, player one player two there's no player three or four power bars remember that 
uh, face. This is where you put the character's portraits, uh, which is the um, sprite number 9000 and 0 for both of them. You could use other numbers, but it, you know, uh, I like to keep it the same. I don't use custom portraits a lot. Simultaneous face for 2 on 2 fighting and turns facing. More or less, this says where player 1's face is, and then you get to put the, where his teammates' faces are going to be. You can have them lined up next to each other or horizontal, vertically, uh, diagonally, you know, whatever you want. Uh, the names, where's the name position going to be for two, one and two, then simultaneous, one, two, three, four. Turns one and two. Uh, copy this and paste it for this because if you know this, turn names and names are kind of the same thing. So make them uh, the same. Time, this is the position where the time number in the middle is going to be 640 by 84, so that's that. You could use a background for it. Um, the time counter, which is the clock, the numbers, the, um, the uh, font, combo font, round stuff, you know, you can do round animation or have it the text display, uh, fight animation or fight display, KO, double KO, time over, uh, win text, two player, uh, this is uh, simultaneous win text, draw text, like if both people kill each other at the same time. Now you have the fight animation, the KO animation. These are win icons, just positioning and blah 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 blah. And how to customize is like kind of in-depth information on it, which you can read. It's not a you know it's not a bad thing. I recommend reading it. So let's start off with this. Um, let's see how's how is the easiest way to make this work? Okay, I just realized there is no easy way to make this work, and I have to change something before I even continue. Hi. Okay, so I'm going to pause here for a second, and I'll come back, and you're going to see what I'm, I did, and I'll explain it. Okay, that took like 10 minutes or so. So here's what I did. I re-ripped the life bars properly the way they should have been the first time. I was kind of in a rush when I did it, and, you know, so far this controls have been talking, so I'm just going to go over quickly what I did. Uh, I left uh, Group 0, Image 0 as the um, imprint of the life bars. This is what they're going to look like. So... Then I added, what the hell is that? No, the, hmm. Okay, that was just strange. It, when you zoom out a little bit, it gets kind of strange. I see, look at that, it's really bizarre. Okay, so, zero is imprint, one is player one. I ripped it separately, so his bar is his bar. Um, then he's got his hurt, then he's got his, um, as gauge and he got his hurt. Then player two ripped his bar separately. Life hurt. Player three, he's got player one and player three's bar right here. So if you're playing two on one, it's gonna show this and it's gonna show that. This way, it doesn't have uh, like one on one life bars for two on two matches. It's strictly for um, for the freedom of doing it all. So I have player three, player three's life, player three's hurt, player four's at mm, organize. Player's four gate bar and life and hurt. Okay, so that's that's all groovy and the power bars are now well synced into each other and they are aligned better now. So on to the coding part. Alright, so okay, let's start up here. We'll do player ones first. Uh, first let's take a look at Mugen's life bars again just to see what we what they look like before we mess with them. Okay, so these are original uh, Mugen 1.0 life bars. This is what we're gonna change starting now. So First things first, erase this ugly frame. So position is, I'm gonna leave the position the same. In fact, I think I'll change it to zero, zero. Yeah, zero, zero to start off with. Um, so player one position, zero, zero. Player one, background, zero, animation, 10. I don't have animation 10 anymore, I erased it. So instead of animation, I'll use sprite equals, um, let's go with, okay, so this is gonna be one comma zero. That's player ones. Uh, BG zero offset. Offset is another word for position. We're not going to mess with the position other than what we have in the SFF, so we can erase that. Um, background one sprite. That uh, we'll just comment this out for now. Uh, mid is going to be the red, and front is going to be the actual health itself. Offset. I don't need offset to be shifted from what it is already because I predetermined what it's going to be. So, all right. Let me, let me just make sure by looking at this. Take off onion skin. Okay, so one one is health bar, one two is red. So mid is always gonna be red, okay? One two and one one. This is his 
frontal um, front life bar shown healthy. This is going to be hurt life bar shown hurting. And this is going to be um, life bar frame. Okay, nice little comments. Now I'll save this, check how it works. And it's a, a kind of like a trial and error process in getting this correct, but you, you know. Okay, so I don't see it. Why don't I see it? Because of my position. Position zero zero. Um, Mugen, it's funny, it reads zero zero as the middle sometimes, and it reads zero zero to the top left like most applications do. Um, all applications start with zero zero axis on the top left most pixel, and they measure downwards um, diagonally to whatever resolution you have. So zero zero is going to be here. So let's try uh, six. Uh, what the hell? Um, twelve. What's twelve eighty by two? Twelve eighty divided by two. Okay, six forty. Wow. Okay, six forty. That's going to be the middle frame. So now the life bar for player one should appear on the left. Show me the money. There you go. Look at that big old chunky retro life bar. That's groovy. Okay. And you see some of the life bar was showing there, but it wasn't showing correctly. Um, another thing before I go, power bars, I want to move these like way down, like 400 down. This way they're out of my way. Um, the faces have a background on them, which as you can see here, player one background sprite blah, background animation. So I'll comment these out so it'll leave the player face alone. Okay, good. Now I'll test it again just to make so you see what I did. All I did was move the life bars down, uh, mo sorry, move the power bars down and erase the little border around the portrait there. Okay, so player one's life bar is showing. Now let's get player two's life bar to show. Okay, so player two's, I'll space it out. Uh, position will be the same position, 40, and I think, let's go with. 15 for this and 15 for this. This value means 15 pixels from the top of the screen, so it's going to move down a little bit, okay? Um, animation uh, 0 uh, sprite equals 2 comma 0 uh, background oh, well, I don't have an animation. Wait, do I? Mm. Uh, no, I don't. Okay. So okay, offset, get rid of that facing, get rid of that. Facing means left and right, similar to how font facing works. It's the same concept. Um, this, I'll keep away, I'll comment this out like above. Erase the offset and the facing, erase the offset and the facing, and more or less, it's kind of the same code as you can see. Uh, so this would be 2, 2, and this would be 2, 1. The range I'm leaving alone for now, until I uh, make sure everything is showing properly. Now remember, if you align everything in the SFF yourself correctly, it's going to appear like this. I mean, these life bars look half done already. As crappy as they are, they look half done. So that's a that's an awesome thing. Let's see. Um, his portrait can move over and these gauges can move over. Now, see, the portraits are in the way of getting the full gauge. So I'm going to move these portraits over right now. Just because I want to make that uh, jump when I... Uh, put the bars in correctly. So I'm going to take a screenshot and zoom in like crazy. Open the image in paint. Use the selection tool. It's called select in Windows 7 and 8. Take this piece, draw a line, and go here like this. This comes up as 10. And on this side, start from the end of the image, the line, this comes up as 9. That's always going to happen. You're always going to be one off on the right side and the left side. So 10 here, and then going down, it's going to be... 66. Okay, so let's go into the face section quickly. Position 66 plus 20. 86. 86. This is over by 10. It needs to go to the left by 10. So I remember, 0, 0 is here. This is 0. This line here is 0, which you don't see. So it's over by 20 pixels. So come from here to here. Look at that. 20 pixels. So we need to move that 10. So we'll take away 10. And we'll end up with 10. As for these, these are actually going towards the end. So, um, if I were to check this all the way to the left side, 
it'll most likely be uh, 120, uh, 1260. So let's move to 1270. We'll save, and when I check Mugen this time, the uh, portraits are going to be in the correct position. <laughs> hey, look, they're in the correct position. What the hell are the odds of that? Alrighty. Now, I, I'm just being picky, but I think they're really a bit too, uh, too low. I, it could just be me, but I'm, I'm going to uh, raise them up a bit. So that's going up by 2 pixels, and these are going to go up by 2 pixels as well. Yeah, 13 and 13. Good. Okay, so that's that's that. Now we need to work on the alignment. Let's see, I'll take a screenshot of the actual bars. Now, this is some crazy cockamamie science I came up with to get this. And I don't know if it'll work for anybody else, but let's see how it works for me in this tutorial. Um, okay, so start this end, draw a big old black line. I'm going to the center, so once this little counter on the bottom left here hits 640 you unclick and it'll leave that black mark so right at the end I don't even think it works like that let me see uh, put a solid thin line of uh, green uh, bright green color this will help me see better because that black kind of misled me just now okay good so aim for that 640 again and boom 640 right here good okay now let's see our numbers the X range is negative 6, negative 43. Now, starting from the center, well, let's see. Let's start from this side. This is 206, okay? Starting from the center of the image now, this is negative, well, don't worry about this. It's 434, right? But the coding says 433, so I'm just one pixel off. All right, so the, it's, the life bar is actually starting on negative six. So, and in this case with the life bars, the middle of the screen, zero, um, what is it, 640, zero, this is considered the center and the beginning of the life bars. So to make this work, uh, which is awesome here right now, actually, because my idea works. Um, this is 640. So let's move this over with the selection tool right here. If you see it, it says 75. So we'll start the life bar on 75. And then how much do we have to move the life bar down by? We'll start by here again. I missed it. Got it. Okay, 75 all the way down to 585. So this will be negative 585. And the reason they're negative numbers is because they're on the left side. So think of uh, this as a number line. This is 0. This is 1, this is 2, this is 0, this is negative 1, negative 2. So it's a number line. That's how it works. So when I save this, you're going to see player 1's light bar fit into place perfectly. That's not it. Okay. There you go. Look at that. Player 1's light bar is perfectly in position thanks to my crazy cockamini math that happens to work. And when you press F2, you reduce the player's health to 0. Or actually reduce their health to one. And if I'll take I'll take a screenshot now and show you. If you actually zoom in all the way, you can see that one life is right here. This one line of pixel. That's your zero life. And when you get a hundred life, it'll be this line here. So you see that crazy idea of mine actually works for this. It got it got me the thing. So now I gotta do player twos. Okay, so let's see. Player two will be the same concept. In fact, because these life bars are symmetrical, I can just use the same values, like 75 and 585. Oops. And this should work perfectly fine. I think I may have to change the 585 to 584, mainly because Mugen takes off one on the top on the right corner. Okay, I noticed something very funny about that, but let's see how this looks. Okay, see, it's kind of off by one pixel there. So and this one probably has more here, but there's nothing to show, so it won't show. So um, close. No. And this is gonna be 74, and this will be 84. There. So player two will always be one pixel off of player one, at least in my experience. I mean, sometimes you get the exact same value, and it works perfectly fine. 
So this is one-on-one -on -one life bar. So what do we do? We copy it and paste it for turns. Because when you're playing turns, it's the same one-on-one -on -one life bars. So now you finished uh, single life bars and you finished the turns life bars. Now what we're gonna do is align the um, the name. The name is a tad off. So let's take a look at the screenshot and see where we are with this. I honestly I can't give you a proper way to, to align this other than just guessing. Um, this is a hundred and what does it say? It says 142 pixels to the right. You know, zero here, zero zero, 35 down. 140 something to this side so it's here so let's make this uh, I'm, I'm just gonna uh, I guess with this one actually thirty-seven okay let's see let's start the font here 46 37 46 I'll leave 35 alone that seems to work <clears throat> Yep, so his name looks really good in there. A tad scrunched up, but that's fine, I guess. And <clears throat> the other Kung Fu Man is going to be the same thing. So let's see. His value is like a really high number. So we're going uh, to do a little math here. Uh, we'll take Player 1's original value, 142. Take away 46. And we get 96. Okay, so we moved 96 pixels. So we're gonna take one one thirty eight player two's value and plus ninety six pixels because it's moving to the right. So it's gonna be twelve one two three four, and it's gonna be the same. Now I know this might be confusing uh, how I explain it, but life bars can be confusing. A lot of what I've learned from life bars are trial and error. And I mean, look at this. I've converted the one point oh life bars to regular classic Mugen HD life bars. Except that, Fight. and that. But, yeah, I mean, that's pretty awesome, right? So, I will do the power bar now. Remember, the power bar does not change position at all. It's going to stay wherever it is, regardless of what happens to the life bars. That's why you have to mm, plan out your life bars to work around your power bar sometimes. It can be a problem, but, you know, it's that's how the engine is. Nothing we can do. Now, what's awesome about this is that the same idea I had for the life bars works for the power bars. So let's change up the power bars and go to that. Um, do, 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 do. Oh yeah, so my pl uh, I can erase this. I can erase my comments now. So my player one and two face will be my player. Oh yeah, my player one face will be my player one face. My player two face will be my player two face. Okay, now power bar, awesome stuff. And now we don't have a background animation. We don't have a background uh, zero or background one. Mid sprite does not work. All you really need is this front animation. Honestly speaking, that's all you really need for an animation, unless you want to make something over the top, super fancy. You know, so this is all you really need for a basic power gauge. And since I aligned everything in the um, SFF, I can just use uh, the same values for everything. So 13, 640, or 640, 13. So position will be the same. This is not an animation, it's a sprite. And your sprite as well. And what sprite are you? You're 5, 0. See how. Planning everything out like that early helped. Now we're gonna test it. It's the bar is gonna fill up a little bit from the old code, but it won't fill up all the way like it should. Round See? One. Now oh, these little notches here that I put in to make it like level one, two, three. I did this uh, by measuring it carefully. I, I counted the amount of pixels in it, and then divided by three. So take a screenshot of this thing. Lots of screenshots, lots of testing and playing. That's the only way to do this right. And it's by far is the quickest way that I've ever done this, honestly. I've never done this so quick. I'm surprised I rebuilt it so fast. Uh, there will be a second part of this video, and the second part will feature the animations. I have to make them first. Now, what the hell? Zoom out a little bit. Mm, there. Okay, good. So let's go back to three. I mean, 640, and 
boom c640 in the bottom left right here that's what I'm aiming for now let's see the power bar starts with remember this is all uh, le negative okay le negative and this is all the positive okay that's how it's gonna work left side negative right side positive only with life bars because this is kind of strange coding but this is how it works so selection tool again starting here at the end of the green line uh, my power bar starts at 75 okay same thing obviously and power bar good it fits in the same thing okay and the power bar is once I missed once I get this Good. power bar is going to be up to five oh six okay so that's our range um, negative seventy five negative five oh six that's our range and pos oh wait that's not that then mm. five oh six this is the counter I messed with there that's uh, oops I'll fix that later anyway so this is that I'll copy paste it right here I'll lower the value by one for each of them and I think now player one and player two's life bars will be practically playable let's take a look look good pull the gauges up looks good let's do a super fills up excellently right there to break do another super right there to break again so that's perfect put player two in there smack him a bit there we go his fills perfectly to the end as well and lastly first gauge as well is perfect so now the gauges fit awesomely the life bar is kinda drain super fast so let's take a look at that uh, mid animation oh, oh I, it's because I have mid animation it's not an animation it's a sprite that's what I did wrong okay so now when they get hit it's gonna show the actual thing uh, what am I doing this and this okay good okay so now one on one life bars are done I will end the video here and I'll start next video right away of which will be simultaneous life bars so thanks for watching check out the next video you have to or else you won't figure out what the hell to do so keep watching